Good morning students, today we will uh, talk about transformation of random variables which is a very important uh, subject in the context of probability theory. So, this is a uh, at least the problem is very simply stated. We have uh, a random variable x okay, distributed as uh, some pdf p of x okay. and I am just putting a label capital X to remind ourselves that this is a pdf of small x. Now, you have a function y that is given as f of x okay. and uh, this relationship is sort of a one to one mapping in the sense that I can invert this uh, uh, equation to get the values of x by simply saying that x is uh, s f inverse of y. Okay. And uh, now, I am interested in asking what is the pdf of y. Okay. So, basically I am asking that what is the value or what is the pdf of the distribution of y. So, let us uh, call this distribution as p of y and I am going to put a subscript capital Y to alert the reader that this is a pdf of y. Okay. Now, the problem is uh, very simple to solve in this case of uh, you know a one dimensional random variable you just have one variable that is x and it is mapped to another variable y. So, I can simply say that the probability to find a random variable in the vicinity of x is given by p of x dx and since for each y each x there is a, a unique mapping this should be the same as a probability to find the random variable y in the region <coughs> y and y plus dy okay so then i can extract the pdf of y by simply p of x into mod of dx by dy and this quantity dx by dy is called as the Jacobian of the transformation. So, it simply uh, is a measure of uh, a length amplification factor in two dimensions the Jacobian would uh, give you an amplification of the area in three dimensions if you have three random variables the Jacobian would give you a volume amplification factor. You are already probably aware of how to go from Cartesian coordinates x y to r theta coordinates. So, this would be like uh, saying how does the area element just a minor digression d x d y is related to area element in plane polar coordinates. Now, the left hand side is an area element it has uh, dimensions of length square. If you look at the right hand side it is uh, just length. So, clearly something is missing here and the something that is missing is the Jacobian of the transformation. So, I am just going to write down In general, it is a function of the new coordinates in which I am taking my old coordinates and I will discuss uh, in the following uh, lecture that this Jacobian is nothing but r. So, the two dimensional uh, coordinate transformation from Cartesian to polar involves the Jacobian that is r here. Now, you can say the area matches dimensionally on both sides and the amplification factor is nothing but the radial uh, distance r 
which is the Jacobian of the transformation. And if the transformation between new coordinates and the old coordinates is canonical, then the Jacobian is unity. So, in this case the Jacobian is not unity, it is R and this is the uh, basically uh, the transformation. So, <coughs> you can also call the Jacobian as uh, the area magnification factor. So, this is the, the two dimensional argument. In uh, three dimensions, you would uh, basically have uh, dx, dy, dz and this will be equal to dr d theta d phi if you are going from Cartesian coordinates to spherical polar coordinates. Again we are running into the same issue that this is not dimensionally consistent. So, I must attach a Jacobian here which is a function of in general a function of r theta and phi. This will give me how the area element or the volume element in spherical polar coordinate is related to the volume element in the Cartesian coordinate. And uh, if you do the calculation, which I will defer it for the uh, assignment, this will come out to be r square sin theta. So, in some sense uh, the Jacobian r square sin theta is the volume amplification factor of the coordinate transformation here. So, we are dealing with a one dimensional random variable. So, we do not have an area or a volume, we have a length. So, our Jacobian simply tells us how length is uh, magnified. Okay. So, d x by d y is the uh, Jacobian here or the length magnification factor. So, I can write this as uh, p of x dx into the mod of the Jacobian because I do not want the probabilities to come out negative, the probability densities have to be positive. So, I have to guard it with this uh, mod of uh, j and this will be my new probability density. So, this is going to be my result that is as simple as it can get. So, we can take one simple example to illustrate the point. So, take this example of a, a random variable x which is distributed as a, some lambda e raise to minus lambda x and our random variable x is uh, defined in the domain 0 to infinity. So, basically my p d f looks like this. So, if this is my x distribution, then it simply decays exponentially with this value becoming lambda. Okay. And uh, let us say I define a function y which is uh, x square. Okay. So, then I have to find out what is the p d f of y. Okay. So, you can uh, compute this p d f which is basically we will say that if y has a p d f p of y then i can simply say that uh, by conservation of uh, probability that uh, p of y dy is equal to p of x dx. Okay. And by our previous logic, our uh, p of y is nothing but uh, 
the probability as a function of x into the Jacobian which is dx over dy. Now, for the equation y equal to x square we can compute this derivative. So, I can write down dx over uh, dy as uh, simply I can take derivative on both sides with x. So, I will uh, with both sides with respect to y. So, I will get 1 equals twice x uh, dx by dy. So, I can write this as 1 upon 2 x. <coughs> so, basically this is uh, just p of x into 1 upon 2 mod x. Okay. Now, if you want to find out p of y, you can simply use the fact that x is always positive, it is defined in the range 0 to infinity. So, mod x is just x. So, I can rewrite the p d f of x as uh, lambda e raise to minus lambda and uh, I will write x as square root of y. Okay. I will not take uh, x as minus square root of y because x is defined in the range uh, 0 to infinity. Okay. So, I am going to take only the positive value of x and I have uh, in the denominator 2 times square root of x because uh, recall that uh, my x was defined in the range 0 to infinity. Correction, this is uh, square root of y. Okay. So, this is going to be my PDF and if I plot this PDF, you can see that this has a singularity at uh, x y equal to 0. because this pdf is lambda e raise to minus lambda y over 2 square root of y. Okay. So, as y goes to 0, the numerator goes to 1, denominator diverges to infinity. So, denominator diverges to 0, so the pdf becomes infinity. So, there is a singularity at d origin, but it does not pose any problem. This is an integrable singularity. And by integrable singularity, I mean I can immediately find out the norm of this PDF and show that this is well behaved. So, if you find out the norm, which is the conservation of total probability, since y is x square, you do not have negative values of y. Okay. So, the domain will be from 0 to infinity, y is x square, it cannot have negative values. Let us uh, see that our PDF just obtained is well behaved or not. So, I am going to integrate this and uh, factor lambda can come out. Okay. And uh, if I substitute square root of y as u, then I can uh, just write down this 1 upon 2 square root of y dy as du. Okay. And the limits will transform from 0 to infinity to 0 to infinity because that is the relationship square root y equals to u. So, I can write down that my norm is basically lambda times integral 0 to infinity e raise to minus u d u, which e raise to minus lambda u d u. Okay. So, 
So, then you can see that if you integrate this you will get lambda into 1 upon lambda which is 1. So, this PDF is also well behaved. So, our original PDF was yes. So, let us uh, write down the PDF. Our original PDF was lambda e raise to minus lambda x and our final uh, PDF is basically lambda over 2 square root of y e raise to minus lambda y lambda square root y this is going to be PDF of y. Fine. So, now let us uh, proceed to a slightly more general case that if you have a sum of two random variables let us say you have uh, x and y as two random variables distributed as uh, p of x and you have another variable y which is distributed as uh, p of y and you define a new random variable u which is uh, x plus y. Then you want to know how is uh, this random variable u distributed. Okay, you are in position of the random variable distributions x and y you would like to know how is u distributed. Now, there are two ways of doing it. One way is the method of Jacobians that I will describe shortly. The other way is to attempt this problem by the method of characteristic functions. Both methods are uh, will give you the same answer, but let us extend our present method of Jacobians in this, uh, this problem. So, <coughs> going by the previous discussion if you have the two variables x and y and you want to know how x plus y is distributed you can introduce one more variable let us say v. So, that from x y you generate a new pair u v which you can call as just uh, x. Okay. So, what is happening here is that you have a pdf I will say that this is an x y pdf of x comma y huh? and uh, because x and y are independently distributed this is nothing but uh, I will say p of x x into p of y y. Okay. So, you have to find out by conservation of probability the distribution u v. So, we can just uh, write down the probabilities to find the x y uh, in the range x and x plus d x y y plus d y such that the sum x plus y is z or sum x plus y is u in this case. So, I am going to write down this as uh, p x y x comma y d x d y and uh, basically this should be equal to the p d f u v u comma v into now there is a amplification factor involved because I have gone from uh, x y to u v. So, there is an amplification factor here that is the Jacobian into du dv. So, this is a straightforward generalization of our 1D case. If you look at the 1D case which is written here, I had gone from x to y, now I am going from x y to u v. So, the area element dx dy transforms to area element du dv subject to a Jacobian that is 
the area amplification factor. Now, this is very simple to derive actually this uh, if we derive the equation 1 then uh, the case is practically solved. So, you can think of uh, some simple x y coordinate system wherein you consider two displacements d x and d y. Okay, so, this is displacement x and that is displacement y okay. and uh, this is the small area that I would like to draw here. I will call it as area x y or let us just call it area ok. And because our variables x y depend on variables u and v, I can write down x as a function of u and v okay, and y as a function of uh, u and v or I can invert them and also write down equivalently that u is a function of x and y and v is a function of x and y. <coughs> so, you can invert this map. And then say that uh, since a displacement in x is affected by displacements in u and v, vice versa, you can say the displacement in u is affected by displacements in x and y. So, I will say that uh, the displacement in x is affected by displacements in u and displacement in v. Okay. Of course, there are some prefactors here that one has to attach, so that it becomes displacement in x. These prefactors are d x over uh, d u and this is d x over d v. So, this is the total displacement affected in x due to individual displacements in u and v. Okay. So, I will rewrite this for displacement along y then it is easy to see that this is uh, just uh, dy by dv times dv. So, now you can see that x and y were displacement dx and dy were displacements in the uh, x y plane and that give me this uh, small uh, area element dx dy. So, the area element here is basically dx dy is simply obtained by cross product of dx and dy, but because dx and dy are orthogonal to each other the cross product is just magnitude dx times dy. So, I can imagine now two displacements due to the u v pair. Okay, so, I will call the displacements due to u v pair as some vectors a and uh, vectors v. <coughs> the displacement due to x and y were dx and dy. So, you can already see the form of this vector a and b. If you look at the dx and dy, you can already pick up the form of u and v. Okay. So, you can see that the first uh, term on the right hand side of dx is basically one term of a. So, I will say this is dx by du times du in the direction of i plus the component that is the first term for d y that is uh, d y by d u times d u in the direction j. Okay. So, as you can see I can write down that this is entirely due to 
du. So, the displacement due to du has been uh, has affected in my displacement vector a. Similarly, due to dv I can write down the other two parts which is uh, dx by dv plus dy by dv. So, this is basically due to dv okay. and uh, similar to this area that was swept by uh, uh, the total basically uh, the region dx dy. I can consider the displacement vectors a and b the corresponding vectors. So, this is my vector a and this is my vector b their full forms are written already here. So, if you want you can project it along the x axis and get d x component, but that is not necessary here the forms are already written before you. So, the same area which is in in terms of d x d y becomes the area a cross b. Okay. So, I will wipe out this uh, thing. and indicate this area as some red color. So, this is basically the shaded region So, I will say that uh, this region here has the same area as the shaded region here. Of course, the area in the shaded region is given as a cross b and I want the magnitude of the area. So, I have taken the magnitude of a cross b that is the typical formula for area of a parallelogram with uh, sides that are uh, a and b. Okay. So, I will say that uh, in, in terms of the coordinates what I have done essentially is that I have transformed a rectangle into a parallelogram. Okay. So, either I can work in terms of x y then my um, total uh, area swept is d x d y or I can compute a cross b that is the area both are the same. So, I will say that this uh, is basically equal to the area of a parallelogram. Okay. So, I will say area of this is equal to area of the parallelogram. So, then I can simply write down for uh, uh, write down this as uh, d x d y which is the area of rectangle that was easy to see as mod of uh, a cross b. Now, mod of a cross b is nothing but uh, I will write it as uh, a x b y minus b x a y okay. that is the form of a cross b which is in the plane coming out of the display board and I have taken the magnitude of it. So, this is the strength of it. Okay. So, I can then write this as uh, uh, from this uh, definition here I can write it as uh, d x over d u into d y over d v minus I can write it as d x over d v into d y over d u. Of course, I have taken d u times d v outside. Okay. 
So, then this can be written in the form of a determinant. The outer uh, mod, outer uh, vertical line is for the mod. Okay. So, this is nothing but the Jacobian of the transformation. So, I will say this is uh, basically I will say this is uh, del x comma y over del u comma v which is the Jacobian of the transformation times du dv. So, as a, uh, the left hand side is basically dx into dy that is my area element in the Cartesian coordinate du dv is the area element in the uv coordinate system the amplification factor is the Jacobian. Okay. So, now you can uh, find out this amplification factor. So, now you can say that the probability dis, uh, density in the x y which is a function of x comma y times d x d y should be the same as the probability density in the u v plane for the variables u comma v into d u d v. Okay. But I know the left hand side can also be written as uh, p x y times the Jacobian into d u d v. So, if I compare uh, these two sides. Okay. I can uh, come to conclusion that uh, P u v is nothing but P of x y into the Jacobian. Okay. The first and the third equality comes because of the Jacobians. So, if I just compare the second and third I get this relationship just knock off the area element d u d v from both sides. So, then uh, for a typical case I can solve this problem. So, let us call this as equation 2. So, now we can apply this concept. So, you can take uh, um, two random variables x that are distributed as uh, x is distributed as uh, some lambda into e raise to minus lambda x. Let us say that is the distribution of x exponential distribution. Take another random variable that is distributed as uh, some beta e raise to minus beta y and uh, you want to know how is the sum distributed. So, define a random variable nu from x y we call u v. So, u is a random variable of our interest which is x plus y and uh, I will also get one more variable which is not necessary. Uh, but I will I want to evaluate the Jacobian. So, I need one more variable let us say v equals to x we will keep it as x we do not require it. So, we have kept it as x you can keep it as y you are free to do that. So, now let us compute the Jacobian we have gone from x y to u v. So, therefore, the Jacobian d x over d u into and the d x over d v, d y over d u and d y over d v. Okay. So, we can call this as a equation 3 of a Jacobian. So, compute all these derivatives. So, d x over d u we can uh, write it as uh, simply d over uh, d u into x can be written as uh, u minus y. So, this is just uh, 1 okay. and uh, d x over d v is nothing but uh, d x over d x because v is equal to x. So, that is 1. Okay. You can write down uh, for uh, So, let me move 
move it uh, this place. Okay. So, we can write down d y over uh, d u as d by d u of uh, u minus x, which is uh, 1 and we can write down d y by d v, which is uh, d y by d x, because v is equal to x y and x are independent variables. So, this is 0. So, therefore, our Jacobian becomes, so you can write down 1, 1, 1, 0. So, the Jacobian becomes minus 1. So, then we can write down our, uh, uh, from our relationship here, that P u comma v is equal to mod of minus 1, which is just uh, 1. So, basically from equation 2, I can write down very easily that my u v distribution, joint distribution of u comma v is given by the joint distribution of x comma y. But this is nothing but uh, individual distribution products, because x and y are so, now you can write down this as uh, lambda into beta e raise to minus lambda into x into e raise to minus beta into y. That was those are the forms of p x and p y. Okay. And uh, let us substitute for x and y. Recall that our uh, random variable u was x plus y and we had taken the new variable v as just x. So, I am going to write down this as e raise to minus lambda v because x is equal to v into e raise to minus beta. I will write down y as uh, u minus v because x is equal to v. Now, this is the joint PDF of u comma v. I am interested in just the PDF of u. This can be obtained by washing out the v degrees of freedom. So, I have to wash out the v degrees of freedom and uh, this I can uh, do by integrating my total p d f over v. The limits on v has to be carefully chosen. By looking at this uh, relationship, I can easily say that the lowest value of uh, v can be 0, because x and y are positive variables distributed between 0 and infinity. So, certainly u and v also will have the minimum value of 0. So, in this integral I have to take v as 0 as the lowest value. The upper limit on v will be definitely u, because by this relationship v cannot exceed u, because I want the sum to be x plus y that is u. So, then I can uh, write it as e raise to minus lambda v, e raise to minus beta times u comma u minus v d v. Okay. So, then you can see that I will immediately take out uh, lambda beta outside and uh, e raise to minus uh, beta u will also come out of the integral and I have uh, v going from 0 to u e raise to uh, minus v lambda minus beta. Okay. And then if I integrate this, I will get e raise to minus v lambda minus beta over beta minus lambda in the range, if I apply the limits, this will be basically lambda beta over beta minus lambda into e raise to minus beta u. Just plug the limits, the answer is uh, very easily obtained e raise to minus uh, u into lambda minus beta minus 1.
all right. So, then this is uh, nothing but uh, e raise to minus beta nu will cancel what you will have for the first term is uh, minus uh, lambda mu lambda u minus e to the power minus beta u. So, this is the pdf of u. So, this is the pdf of the sum. So, this is how the sum is distributed. So, I will say this is the pdf which tells how x plus y is distributed. Okay. So, this brings us to the end of this uh, variable transformation. You can also do similarly to just extend this method and uh, compute how um, x into y will be distributed. So, you can take u as x y and v as uh, y and uh, then say how is uh, u distributed by the techniques uh, you know discussed above can thus be calculated easily. Okay. So, we end the lecture here, we will uh, in the assignment we will get some problems that will use different distributions. The we have taken the example of the exponential distribution, you can generalize uh, this method to compute uh, um, other uh, distributions as well. So, you can take x and y that are uh, normally distributed and uh, comment on how x plus y is distributed, x into y is distributed or uh, x upon y is distributed. Please uh, take care of the fact that when you are using the method of Jacobians, it will only give you an area amplification factor. Once that factor comes to your, uh, uh, comes in front of you, you have to ensure that the joint PDF needs uh, to be integrated over one uh, variable to get the uh, PDF of your interest. And when you do that, the integration limits have to be very carefully chosen. In this case, we had to ensure that V is not uh, independently moving, it is uh, moving, um, keeping in um, the constraint that the sum x plus y is always fixed to u. So, that needs to be properly taken care of. Okay. So, we will stop here and uh, proceed in the next class.